Welcome to this Fall 2012 course, Aquinas, Soul, and Intellect, taught at Marquette University in Milwaukee, the Catholic University of Leuven in Belgium, and the Universidad Panamericana in Mexico City. This is a joint effort by myself, Richard Taylor, and professors Andrea Robilio at Leuven and Luis Lopez Farhat at the Universidad Panamericana in Mexico City. This video may be freely used for non-commercial purposes only. Commercial reproduction is forbidden. It may not be modified in any way. And finally, attribution to the author is required. If any questions arise regarding the video, please contact me at richard.taylor at marquette.edu. Also feel free to send me comments and corrections. I'd be delighted to be corrected, lest I wallow in ignorance. So, we move on. There are two topics here, but closely related topics, that will be taken up in this video. That is, the first topic is first and second of heroism. This, this teaching will be explained in, in detail in just a few minutes. The second topic is the epistemology of Albert the Great in his De Homine. Video 6a concerns the explanation of first and second of heroism. Video 6b will focus in on the epistemology of Albert the Great in his De Homine. My purpose with regard to the, the uh, video 6b is twofold, and that is, first of all, to show that the epistemology of Albert in his De Homine is based on a misinterpretation of the thought of Averroes, and then secondly, also to show that, in fact, the epistemology set out there by Albert is adopted by Aquinas as his own epistemological approach found in his earliest major work, his commentary in the sentences of Peter Lombard. But we'll save that, more on that, for video 6b. So we move now to the explanation of precisely what are first and second of heroism. These terms are used to indicate the understanding on the part of thinkers of the 13th century uh, Latin tradition of the philosophical content of the teachings on intellect in the Latin translation of the long commentary on the De Anima by Averroes. The terms are not used to indicate the first entrance of Latin translations of works of Averroes in contrast to later translations. Instead, these terms are used to denote the interpretation of Averroes by readers in the first 25 to 30 years of the availability of his long commentary on the De Anima. More specifically, these terms concern the doctrine of Averroes on the natures of the material intellect and the ancient intellect as understood by his readers in the Latin tradition. We've already looked carefully at his own teachings and, and the way his doctrine on the intellect evolved into what came to be the doctrine in the long commentary on the De Anima. What we did in previous classes then will turn out to be quite relevant in explaining the possible confusions, or really the very real confusion, that the distinction of first and second of heroism, as explicated by some scholars, has engendered and continues to engender in others today. First of heroism, defining the term, refers to a sometimes held view that Avera was taught that the agent intellect and the material intellect are powers of the individual soul existing in each individual soul and are not separately existing in material substances. Now you'll note on the basis of our earlier study that in fact this is quite contrary to the real doctrine of Averroes as I've explicated it earlier. But let this be the definition of the term first Averroism. Second Averroism is the view that those intellects are not powers of the soul belonging individually to each human being, but rather they are separate substances ontologically distinct from individual human beings. Of course, you recognize in this, then, the genuine teaching of Averroes himself, as we studied it in the previous lecture. Second Averroism is held to have been created around 1250 by Christian theologians who read into the work of Averroes a theory thought not to be that of Ibn Rushd, or the Arabic writing philosopher from Andalusia. Now you can see this is already rather confused. 
and certainly it is very confusing because now we have this extraordinary this extraordinary assertion that second of Arrowism, that is the doctrine of the separate substances, was a creation on the part of Christian theologians who read, it, read that into Averroes theory. But this is rather bizarre because in fact, as we've seen earlier, this is the real doctrine of Averroes on the nature of the intellect. So we have some confusion here that's well worthy of taking apart and putting back together in a proper way and also of understanding with greater depth because of some of the assumptions that are, that are taken up in this doctrine require considerable explanation and uh, reworking, so to speak. But let's proceed. The genuine teaching of the early psychology, psychological works of Avera was not translated into Latin. We've already seen in our discussions of the short commentary on the De Anima and the middle commentary in the De Anima. You've had some readings on this, plus I've, I've lectured on this earlier. Let me remind you, in these two first commentaries, the short commentary and the, and the middle commentary, Averroes teaches that each human being has his or her own material or receptive intellect, and that there is one agent intellect that is shared by all human beings in knowing. That notion of one single agent intellect for all human beings is common to the Greek and Arabic traditions. And in fact, later on, in the later lecture, we'll see Aquinas himself make that observation, that that is a common doctrine. The agent intellect is a separate substance. It is a common doctrine from the, from the philosophical tradition, from the uh, Arabs and the, the uh, Arabic writing philosophers, and also Greek thought. He will say that later on. So in those earlier works, though, we saw that, in fact, the ancient intellect is separate and the material intellect is individual for each person. The doctrine of precise epistemology in each of those works is quite different, and I refer you to the article that I uh, uh, made available to you earlier for distinctions on that. The teaching of Averroes in the short commentary on the Parva Naturalia of Aristotle, a work translated into Latin, is something I haven't commented on up to this point. It is an earlier version of uh, the thought of Averroes, and the content of it and the epistemology set forward there in just a few words, in very few words, is, is quite distinct. It may be somewhat close to the short commentary on the De Anima, but I'm inclined to think that it may even precede that uh, as well. Uh, but that short commentary on the Parva Naturalia was translated and was made available in Latin. We have both the Latin and the Arabic texts of this work. In this work, Averroes teaches that each human being has, it seems anyway, although he doesn't go into it in detail, it seems that each individual human being likely has his or her own particular material intellect, although the agent intellect is shared. Now I say seems because Averroes does not discuss this in detail, discuss the issue of the material intellect in detail. There are there are inferences that can be made, but that's beyond what our current concern is here now. Of course, the genuine teaching of Rivera was in the long commentary and the De Anima is that there are two separate substances. The Asian intellect, which is responsible for the actuality of intellectual knowing, the actualizing of it, and the material intellect, which is responsible for the receiving of the abstracted intelligible in, in act, consequent upon the provision of the images through the sense, through the senses, the in external senses, the internal senses, and processed by the cogitative power deposited into memory, etc. So that's the genuine teaching. Uh, our concern in the rest of this is with the long commentary in the Daniel. Now, one of the reasons that there's possible confusion among uh, the readers of Avero is concerns ambiguous doctrinal expressions. And it's worth taking a moment to look at some of these expressions. So one expression is sura lana. And this is translated, sura means form, and lana means belonging to us. So this is translated as forma nobis in the Latin quite often. So it's form for us. This terminology appears in regard to the agent intellect in the long commentary in the De Anima. It appears repeatedly. So the agent intellect comes to be formed for us, according to Averroes. 
At this moment, I'm only interested in the language and the possible ambiguity of the language. And it appears then that something, this agent like comes to be formed belonging to us in some fashion, according to the long commentary, as we've seen earlier. Another term that's used is finafs minna. Now that phraseology, finafs minna, is from the middle commentary on the Deanima, and I give you some references to it. Also in the middle commentary, we have finafs as well, in the soul. Uh, finafs, uh, finafs minna is in our soul. I give you two references for that because we have some Arabic for that in the middle commentary. And in the long commentary, though, we find the following. We also find in anima nobis. And at one point, it's appropriate to render that as for us in the soul, or belonging to us in virtue of the soul. And that's in the long commentary in the De Anima at page 390 of the Latin. And we also have the phrase, in the soul, said of these separate intellects. At the long commentary in the De Anima at pages 220 to 21, at page 406, and at page 437 to 438. And I also discuss it in my translation in the, in the introduction of page 90, uh, 99 uh, and thereabouts. So I have you take a look at that. But the notions of these intellects being in the soul, there is also some inspiration in Aristotle. In the De Anima, at Book 2, Chapter 4, 417, B24, Teisuke is used to explain that the universals exist in the soul in a way, or belong to the soul in a way. And then, of course, in our famous De Anima 3 5, we have the phrase ente psuche. And I misspelled that, and we're going to live with it. Uh, I'll correct that later. Ente psuche, and that is the agent and patient mind must be in the soul, or at least these aspects, whatever they are, in De Anima 3 5, must be in the soul. Aristotle himself says that. So these phrases, again and again, seem to indicate that something is in us. Well, the term in can be taken literally, or it can be taken in a more figurative sense. Of course, in is a physical notion. And when it's transferred to the immaterial and the metaphysical constitution of the soul or the self, of course, it can take on other meanings quite distinct from its material meaning, so to speak. But this is an ambiguous expression, and I think these expressions will turn out to be key to some of our discussion later on. R.A. Gautier, famous editor of the work of Aquinas and uh, also of Aristotle, uh, wrote, a, wrote an article called uh, Notes on the uh, Beginning of First of Arabism, the First Moments of, of First of Arabism, in the Revue des Sciences Philosophiques et Théologiques in 1982. This is a valuable, a very valuable, multifaceted study of the initial entrance of the translated works of Averroes into Latin Europe, together with an account of what, are, uh, what uh, Gautier says to be a common reading of those works regarding the nature of the human intellect. Let me just pick out a few small things from Gautier's account. First, the first quotation, quote, nothing presents us from thinking that it is from September 1220 that Michael Scott was enrolled in the service in service to Frederick II in Sicily, uh, remaining there up to his death in 1235. Gautier's work on, historical work on this is extremely valuable and continues to be valuable today. And uh, I certainly would urge you to take a look at that article. So roughly he nails down the time uh, pretty closely to, then to the time when, in fact, uh, Michael Scott was employed by Frederick II, uh, Holy Roman Emperor, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, continued to work with Frederick until, work at the court of Frederick until 1235. Frederick and his court, which was a multilingual court with Jews, uh, Christians, and Muslims there, is a really uh, is really some really quite something interesting, but that has to be left for another time, another opportunity, perhaps a course on Islamic philosophy and its influence, which we could certainly offer here at Marquette. Uh, Gautier goes on later in the article to conclude that that Michael's first translations of Averroes were quote between 1220 and 1224. 
those of the great commentary uh, on the treatise De Anima and the great commentary on the metaphysics, which were known since 1225. So it's very valuable to set the dates here, and Gautier has done a great service for this, a great service for us with this. In 1982, Gautier also published a treatise written by a master of arts around 1225, entitled De Anima et Potentiis Eius, On the Soul and Its Powers. The author of this work clearly cites the long commentary in the Metaphysics of Averroes, as well as the long commentary in the De Anima by Averroes. So we know then that, in fact, this treatise by a Master of Arts in 1225 is a witness to the existence of the works of Averroes in Paris, and, uh, and no doubt elsewhere at the same time though, but certainly in Paris in 1225. In this work, the author cites Averroes as holding, in contrast to Avicenna, that the agent intellect is a power of the human soul. As Gautier puts it, quote, and here's a definition, we almost always pay attention to definitions, this is first Averroism, the doctrine that makes the agent intellect into a power of the soul, close quote. Now that's very important because this is the first time that we've seen someone in that tradition assert this in a very clear way. And now this is being asserted, uh, uh, not, pardon me, it's not really the first in the entire tradition. In fact, uh, lectures are currently being given by uh, Professor Tim Noon at Catholic University of America on abstractionism in a graduate class at the Catholic University of America. Uh, in fact, uh, in those lectures, uh, Professor Noon has already shown that there are others who will assert that the agent intellect is in the soul. But the point here is that this is an assertion with regarding the explanation of the work of Averroes. And here the author of this treatise, this short treatise from 1225, asserts that the agent intellect is a power in the individual human soul. Of course, this is relevant because that's what Thomas Aquinas will later on say. At any rate, let's stick, into our, stick to our topic here. Gautier then says, this is first of errors in the doctrine that makes the agent intellect into a power of the soul. To be specific, however, adds Gautier, for this author there are two intellects, agent intellect and the possible or receptive material intellect, but they are not really different. Rather, they, they are substantially identical, but distinguishable by reason as joined in the single substance of the rational soul. I give you the reference for that. So the assertion here is, uh, according to Gautier, for this author, the assertion is that there is one human intellect, but it has two aspects. They are the same substance, but they're distinguished by reason. Well, that's going to be a problematic issue later on, when someone such as Aquinas deals with this, but that's what the author says. And again, what's being asserted here then is both of these intellects then are really powers of the individual human soul. In this case, consideration of the intellect as united to the body indicates the possible intellect, which as such is perishable, yet immortal in its substance, while the agent intellect just in itself as subsistent is immortal. Okay, so, so the agent intellect in itself is immortal. Insofar as the possible intellect is tied up to the body, then it is perishable. But in its own nature, left to itself, the possible intellect too is immortal in its substance. These are teachings that Thomas Aquinas will hold in, in his own way by saying that the rational soul can be separated from the body and yet still have its powers of possible intellect and agent intellect, which are powers of its substance, and the rational soul can exist separately from the body because the rational soul, after creation, is essentially immortal. Gautier then goes on, uh, goes on to add this remark, quote, such is the doctrine which reigned without challenge at the Faculty of Arts from 1225 to 1250, and was maintained even beyond that date." Close quote. Now, this comment by Gautier, unfortunately, this comment, uh, evidence indicates, is not correct. 
that is, we will see that in fact there were various versions available uh, at, in, in this early period. There were some that are suitably called first of Averroism and others suitably called second of Averroism. And so the methodology of Gautier might be questioned here as well. But let's go on. There's, there's something even more interesting about to uh, come to the fore here. Gautier found the issue of first of Averroism and second of Averroism addressed by Dominique Salmon in an article published in 1937. According to Salmon, initially the works of Averroes were welcomed as corrective to Avicennian thought, which required a separate agent intellect. The notion that intelligibles and knowing takes place only through uniting with a separate agent intellect could be adapted, and was by many, to Augustinian thought, but it was still problematic, very problematic. And so Salmon says that Averroes was in fact welcome to correct Avicennian thought. Now, in this so-called first Averroism, Averroes was read as having held the agent intellect and the material intellect to be powers of the individual soul, according to Salmon. So Salmon is a source for Gautier in Gautier's view of first Averroism as the notion that these agent intellect and the material intellect are powers of the individual human soul. Now, continuing with Salmon's view, the second, the second Averroism understanding of Averroes came to be widely accepted later on when the doctrine of the agent intellect and the material intellect, intellect came to be understood by theologians of Europe. Let's be clear about this then. For Salmon, this view that the agent intellect and the material intellect are separate substances in the thought of Averroes on intellect is, in fact, the genuine teaching of Averroes. So in sum, what Salmon is saying is that early on, the Christian theologians dealing with the text of Averroes thought that Averroes taught the so-called first Averroism, namely that, that the intellects are powers of the individual human soul. But Salmon says later on, so the second Averroism understanding that has them as separate, separate substances as is the real teaching of Averroes, is something that came later to be understood by theologians of Europe. We need to be quite clear about the, what Salman is saying here, if we're going to understand what a Gautier does. And, um, and uh, we proceed. Okay. So Salman recognized the two forms that un the understanding of Averroes took, and Salman rightly notes that the true teaching of Averroes is that the agent intellect and material intellect exist as separate immaterial substances. So what Salmon put forward is, is substantially sound so far. However, in his 1984 introduction to the critical edition of Aquinas' commentary on the De Anima, Gautier contends that the real teaching of Ibn Rushd, reflected in the long commentary in the De Anima translated into Latin, is precisely that teaching of first of Averroism, the account that the agent intellect and material intellect are powers of individual human souls. That's the contention of Gautier in the uh, introduction to the critical edition of Aquinas' commentary in the Deonima in 1984. Now note that this is contrary to what Salmon says. Salman says first Averroism was an incorrect understanding of the true doctrine of Averroes. Gautier, in contrast, says first Averroism is the real doctrine of Averroes himself, that is, of Ibn Rushd, who wrote the long commentary in the Dianima in Arabic. According to Gautier, second Averroism, the doctrine that the agent intellect and the material intellect are immaterial substances existing separately as ontologically distinct from the human soul, according to Gautier, this is a false creation on the part of the Christian theologians of the 13th century and not the genuine teaching of Averroes. Clearly you see the problem now, because what Gautier is rejecting as the genuine teaching of Averroes, we've already seen is the genuine teaching of Averroes. In this, Gautier asserted his own understanding of Ibn Rushd 
and then went beyond and away from the account of Salman, who had affirmed that Ibn Rushd himself had taught the existence of two separate intellectual substances, the agent intellect and the material intellect. The question in this is, why did Gautier do this? What motivated Gautier? What made him think that this interpretation is the correct interpretation? Gautier went on to write in that in, in that introduction to the critical edition of Aquinas's of Aquinas's commentary on the De Anima, he wrote, quote, "But do we have reason to be surprised? Salvador Gomez Nogales has recently has written recently that on the problem of the intellect, one thing is for sure: a verus is not an averroist, in the sense that, that this work indicates second averroism." Close quote. That is, Gautier is asserting on the basis of Gomez Nogales that Averroes is not an Averroist in the sense of holding second Averroism, that is, that there are two separate substances, the ancient intellect and the material intellect. Now, this is false because, as we've seen, that is the real doctrine of Averroes. So it's, very conf it's clearly very confused. Now, the article of Salvador Gomez Nogales appeared in a work, a collection of essays called Multiple Averroes. It's in French. Uh, and his article is St. Thomas Averroes and Averroism. And I want to look at just a little bit of his article to show you the grounds for the confusion here. This is what Gomez Nogales writes. I translate for you. Quote, the adversaries of Averroes, among them Thomas Aquinas, all the Averroists, and even among the moderns, some Arabists, who ordinarily have the tendency to defend Arabic thought, as is the case of Asin Palacios, are all in accord to admit that Averroes defended the unity of the human intellect. Now, this is multiply false. But this is what Gomez Nogales writes. It's multiply false. I carry on. The issue, however, is not clear, writes Gomez Nogales. There are, in Averroes, some expressions which show clearly that he admits the unity of the human intellect. And what he means by unity of the human intellect is that the, hu the, the human intellect has these two powers of soul, and that there is no separate intellect, or intellects. He goes on, then, but on the other side, if one admits this point of view, one encounters in Averroes a manifest contradiction. He goes on, finally, I have reached a conclusion which has been affirmed a posteriori by three different procedures. Close quote. Gautier then goes on to explain his own methodology, and I address this elsewhere. In fact, I address this in the introduction to the long commentary in the De Anima, so I'd have you look, at, look there. The point here clearly is, though, that Gautier has been misled by his reliance upon Salvador Gomez Nogales. In fact, what's really quite interesting is that Gomez Nogales systematically misunderstands Averroes. Curiously, Gomez Nogales speaks of a, a late work by Averroes discovered in Paris that solves the issue completely. Well, it turns out that the late work that he thought that solved the issue was, in fact, the middle commentary by Averroes, that said, middle commentary in the Dynamo, which says that each individual human being has his or her own material intellect. Of course, that doesn't get Gomez Nogales off the hook, so to speak, because Averroes still holds, as everyone else did in the tradition, that, in fact, there's one agent intellect. So sadly, the work of Gomez Nogales on this is terribly confused. Now the question might be, why is it confused? My own view is that Gomez Nogales tries to make the teachings of Averroes reasonable, where reasonable is what Gomez Nogales thinks they ought to be. When in fact, Averroes taught a doctrine which is reasonable in its own argumentative context, but does not fit with contemporary notions. So, Gomez Nogales is trying to make Averroes fit in as, uh, as a, a good Muslim and make everything integrate perfectly in accordance with Gomez Nogales' conception 
of what Averroes should be saying. This is poor scholarship. That Gautier was incorrect in thinking that the traditional understanding of Averroes as holding for the existence of the separate agent intellect and separate material intellect is wrong, that fact does not affect the issue of his thesis that Latin thinkers understood until 1250 that the long commentary in the De Anima teaches that those intellects are not separate substances but powers of the individual human soul. Now, other arguments show, show that Gautier is incorrect, and in fact, part of what we'll be looking at in the next video, uh, in the next video on Albert, will in fact push uh, the understanding of Gautier further into the into the uh, the back of uh, our consideration. In fact, it's going to turn out that there were contemporaneously first of Arawism interpretations and second of Arawism interpretations among the Latin thinkers, Latin theologians, interpreting the thought of Averroism. And interestingly enough, Albert will be, in fact, a witness to the existence of both interpretations. But we'll see that later. Let me mention now, though, one piece of evidence to the contrary with regard to Gautier. Remember, Gautier's thesis is that that most of the Latin thinkers held until about 1250 that, in fact, uh, the, held, in fact, the first Averroes in view of the work of Averroes, namely that the agent intellect and the material intellect are powers of the individual soul. And that's just not true. In fact, the evidence is to be found in the Contra Averroem by Richard Rufus, dated around 1236-37, and the, in his question, on intelligentiae separate sint res individue, whether separate intellects are individual things. And the question, uh, question is uh, found, followed by a detailed discussion closely based on texts of Averroes and displaying a clear understanding of the teaching of Ibn Rushd on the separate material intellect. That is, it was clear to Richard Rufus that in the very text of Averroes is the doctrine of the separate material intellect, not the material intellect as part of the individual human soul. And Richard Rufus bears witness to that in a text written about 1236 or 1237. So there's a great deal to be corrected on this view of first of Averroism and second of Averroism. Does this mean there never was among the Latins a first of Averroism doctrine, teaching that the intellects and the long commentary in the De Anima are not separate substances, the real doctrine of Averroes, but rather are instead powers of the individual soul? Well, as I said already, in fact, we will see in video 6b precisely this doctrine of, a first, of first of Averroes was held by Albert the Great, the teacher of Thomas Aquinas, in his De Homine, completed about 1245. What is more, we, will sh we shall uh, see that the systematic misunderstanding of the real doctrine of Averroes by Albert enabled Albert to craft a new teaching on human intellect and intellectual understanding, one that came to be adopted by his student Thomas. And finally, one additional point here, we will see at the very end of Lecture 6b that, in a way, Albert himself bears witness to two interpretations of Averroism, one corresponding to first Averroism and one corresponding to second Averroism. But for that, you'll have to look at video 6b. And that's it for this.